Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. A while back I made a video outlining the characteristics of high speed steel and carbide tools that can be used on the mini lathe. And in that video I referenced how broken twist drills can be recycled and turned into basic lathe tools. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. You know, the chances are, if you have been machining for any good amount of time, I'm willing to bet that you have some high-speed steel drill bits that are probably destined for the bin. And if you have a mill, you probably have a few more broken end mills than you're probably willing to admit, or you have a few end mills that have certainly passed their service life. And if this is the case, I recommend that you save them so they can be reground into basic lathe tools. High speed steel is such a simple material to shape if you have a bench grinder and they can be ground into custom shapes for projects that require unconventional cutters. So today I'll take you through my process that I have done in the past to recycle these drill bits into pretty decent lathe tools. First of all, a few things I should point out though. Firstly, I'm not recommending these as a replacement to the square high speed steel blanks that you can buy. As I'll point out later, the blanks will be made from a known and probably appropriate grade of high speed steel and these square blanks will be much more rigid than these circular twist drills. I am recommending these though to be used when you need an unconventional tool or a form tool that you may really need and in that scenario you wouldn't really want to chew up a blank just to make a tool that you might use maybe once. I do think though that this is a great way to practice tool grinding. Broken twist drills or unusable second hand drills will be much more affordable to test grinding with when you are starting out and they will certainly be a lot easier to come by. Secondly, whilst twist drills will undoubtedly be the most common source of high speed steel, end mills are a really great source of high speed steel. Some will have a large amount of material in the shank compared to a typical jobber drill that you would get from the local hardware store. Finally, high speed steel is high speed steel, but not all high speed steel is created equal. In the same way that high carbon steel is just a term that encompasses all steels with a carbon content between 0.3 to 1.7%, 1095 is a specific type of high carbon steel. And high speed steel is kind of the same. There are many different grades for different applications and different prices. It's probably one of the reasons why the cheapo drill bits that you can buy will conk out drilling through steel when the more expensive name brand ones may chew through steel relatively easily. I'm willing to bet that the high quality drill bit is made from a higher end grade of high speed steel though they don't normally list it on the packaging. A really good all purpose high speed steel that I use in my lathe tools is M2 which is really decent though for cheaper twist drills they generally use the more affordable M50 or M52 grade and whilst they can drill non-ferrous metals they do struggle when cutting steel. It's for this reason that when I recycle lower quality drills I do tend to stick to aluminium and brass cutting with these tools. The twist drills that I will be recycling today are just freebies that I got with the cordless drill and they are pretty rubbish as twist drills. Initially I held the twist drills in a boring bar holder but they are much more rigid if they're held in their own dedicated holders. The holders are just a 12mm piece of mild steel bar stock which are cut to the same length as the tool holder. It's then chucked in the fore jaw and faced on each end. A hole is then drilled the same diameter as the shank of the drill. Next we can drill a hole perpendicular to it to accept a grub screw and then tap some threads into it. 
I picked up this method watching Tin C33's channel. To protect the mild steel tool holder, the part is sanded clean, heated to a red temperature, and then dipped in raw linseed oil to form a thin protective coating. This method is akin to seasoning a cast iron skillet as the high temperature polymerizes the oil forming a thin protective coating. Since we can't grind any tools into the flutes of the twist drill, I'll remove most of it using a grinder. Next we can start to grind our high speed steel tools. Like regular tools, clearance and rake angles need to be ground in and should be ground to suit the material you intend to cut. I'll take you through the process of grinding a basic lathe tool. This one will be left handed, i.e. cutting away from the chuck and it's a tool that I don't intend to use very often. When grinding on the bench grinder, be sure to wear breathing as well as eye protection. And as well as that, make sure not to let the high speed steel get too hot when grinding. When grinding, I like to grind a flat surface in as a first reference surface. This reference surface will be the top face of the tool. Next I'll form in the front relief and front clearance angles. Then we can make the approach relief angles. And finally, we can grind in the top relief. The angles will vary depending on your material. There are various charts in books and on websites online that can help you decide the appropriate geometry for your tool. And this one here that I have ground will be made for cutting plastic. With the basic geometry cut in, I will quickly hone the tool using a diamond stone and then it should be ready to test. Whilst this tool is pretty basic and it does look a little bit peculiar because it is ground into a circular twist drill, I'm pretty happy with the results. It could use a little bit of tweaking but this is pretty good. I'll show you the process of making another tool and I'll run you through some other tools that I've made over the past year. This one here will be an internal groove tool. I'll start by making the flat reference surface first. I use some blue marking dye to mark out the material that I need to remove. With all the cutting surfaces in, it's time to quickly hone it, and then it's time to test it. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with that. There was a really large cutting surface due to the shape of the tool and the cutting geometry that I needed, but it was pretty good at handling the cutting loads. Finally, a few extra tools that I've made over the past year. Probably the simplest one here was the form tool for putting a small radius on brass parts. The radius isn't hugely accurate, though it really doesn't need to be. Another tool that I made was this one. This is intended for cutting aluminium and the reason why I ground it using a twist drill is I wanted to test out chip breakers. For anyone that doesn't know, aluminium is notoriously hard to get to break a chip and I was really happy that after a lot of testing I was able to finally break a chip using aluminium.
Anyway, with these two blanks left over, I'll probably put these away in storage until I need them, and then I can take them out and grind them into shape. And with that, I hope you enjoyed watching this, I hope you learned something, and thank you very much for watching.